Hi, welcome back to our Getting to Know Linux series. This is a fresh install of Linux Mint Tara. So we've got this uh, running on our system right now. I'll go ahead and click the terminal down here and we'll bring up the, uh, the install that I just did. This is the only thing that's been installed so far is Kazam. So we went through and I installed Kazam right there and that's what I'm using to record this. So straight out of the box, it's fully functional. You don't have to uh, make any changes or any kind of weird configurations. This is a fresh install. Okay, so now that I've got that going, let me go ahead and bring up a window here. I'm gonna increase the font a little bit so we can be sure to see that. You see we got the transparency enabled there. And I'll do a little INXI-F and we'll look at the hardware and what we've got running on here uh, just so you can kind of see what the system's running. Not a state-of-the-art PC, so this is uh, an older, where's the top? See, almost to the top there. Uh, you can see it's an older equipment that we're using, so not the uh, the absolute top of the line, but it is. Uh, it was actually really good back for its day. Uh, so I guess back in 2012. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, so this is kind of what we're running right there. And if we want to get some more information, I'm going to clear that. I'm going to type LSB release A. And you can see what we're running right there. It's uh, Linux Mint. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Linux Mint 19.1 Tessa. Yeah, well, there we go. Uh, so Linux Mint 19.1 Tessa. I guess 19 was Tara and 19.1 is Tessa. How about that? So we've got that running. And let's go ahead and look at some of the initial configuration options. So we're going to exit out of here. And yeah, we're going to exit out of there too. Some of my initial configurations. Uh, we'll go over and first go to settings. So I clicked on the settings icon there. We have a, a few things here. I'm using a 4K monitor for this display. So the, uh, the fonts and everything's a little bit small. So I want to increase the size of that. So I'm going to do a font selection here. And down where I've got this text scaling factor, I'm going to take that up to a 1.4. And uh, that 1.4 seems to be a, a really good scale for me. So I'm going to go back now. Uh, so I just want a text scaling factor right there. I took it up to 1.4. I'm leaving every el everything else the same. It seems to scale really well, so I don't need to really mess with it that much. Uh, backgrounds, if you want to change your backgrounds or choose backgrounds, you can go there. You can also just right click on the desktop and go down to change your desktop background. So we've got over to uh, themes here. There is a change that I make in themes. And uh, you're going to see that with windows and themes. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal. So I'm going to press, con gonna press uh, Control Alt T and open a terminal. And then I press Control Alt T again and open another terminal. If you'll notice, both of the windows overlay directly on top of each other. That's really annoying. Uh, so if I open up another one, then now I've got three windows on top of each other, and that's a pain in the neck. Uh, so I really want these cascaded in some way. And okay, that's great. Well, we can cascade those. Another thing is with these, they're transparent. I don't care for the transparency so much. Some people really like that, and that's good. Uh, Linux is all about you being you. So however you want to do it, you do it your way. I'll go to preferences here. And this will give you an idea of where to go to make these changes. I'm going to choose a cost custom font. I'm going to take it up to a, a 13, maybe a 14. I'll take it up to a 14. And then for colors, I'm going to just uncheck that and go over to green on black, green on black. And I'm going to uncheck use transparency from system theme. I'll uncheck that right there. The scrolling, everything's fine on scrolling. From the commands, everything's fine on commands. And compatibility, we're fine on compatibility. So I'm going to choose close. Just modify the unnamed profile. Now we've got to another pro problem. Now that I made this black, I can't tell where one window, so let's say I want to resize this, I can't tell where this window ends and the other one begins. There is absolutely nothing on the edge of these windows. That's a pain in the neck. So let's move these out of the way. Go back over here to themes, where as we can see, we don't know where one ends and the other begins. We're gonna, we're gonna fix that. So go up to window borders, that mint Y, we're gonna choose mint X. Just like that. By choosing Mint X, we get that nice thin line down the sides and we can see where all of the window borders end, which is very helpful. So that that really helps when you're trying to resize a window or you're trying to type, you're trying to copy some text and you don't want to click it to the other window. Usually what happens is you have some text there 
So I'll just do, uh, let's just do a find. Just do that. Uh, so we have the text in there. I want to go over and you can't see where that line is. So you go a little bit too far to copy the text and you grab another window. So you can see how that'd be a pain in the neck. So we switch back over. Mint line, oh, geez, mint line dark. It gives you a dark top. A dark top. So over here, get rid of that. There. Right, right here, oh, I want to copy this. I want to copy this text really fast. Ah, oh, the window behind it was there and I couldn't see where the edge was. Well, let's go back over and choose the mint X and you can see where the edges are now clearly so I don't have to worry about going too far when I when I copy things off the screen and, and with Linux just copying it so if I just copy it like this or let's just say just double click that you can just middle click or choose a two finger click right there to uh, paste those onto the screen so there we go all right we've uh, we've changed that if you want to add remove any uh, go ahead and update it sure if you want to choose any other themes, there are a lot of themes built into it. You can make your own. You can go, go ahead and just however you wanted to design your desktop, you can do that. Under settings, you've got the show icons and menus and show icons on buttons. You can, you can select those if you want to. Now we've done two changes. We've changed fonts and we changed the theme a little bit. Uh, accessibility, we'll look into that really fast. You can see a couple of options with accessibility in there. A couple of uh, things with on-screen keyboards, combinations, the mouse, etc. So I'm gonna go about back off of that. Account details, this is you, so if you wanna, you know, pop your picture in there, or whatever, it's a fun thing to do, so go ahead and do that. Applets, uh, you can go down and you can pick whatever whatever applets you want to show up. Cache is out of date, yes. It's a brand new install, so the cache is not updated. So we'll go through and, and pull all that in. It's never been used before. Uh, date and time is the next place to make a change. So, so far we've made a change in font selection, themes, and now we're going to date and time. Under date and time there, I've got the 24-hour clock. I like using that. That helps out a lot. Uh, display the date, and I'm going to choose yes. And when I choose that, in the lower right-hand corner of my screen, it actually tells me what day it is and what the date is, including the time, which I find very useful. So I can uh, just kind of look down there. Displaying the seconds, they don't seem to help me a whole lot, <laughs> but there you go. There's the date and time. Going back now, desklets. I, have I ever used desklets? I don't think I've ever used desklets actually. So um, I, I know I have some friends who've used desklets and they just go nuts and they throw all kinds of little desklets all over their desktop. So uh, I, I don't use those. Might I in the future? Eh, very possibly, maybe, I don't know. Uh, desktop here. So if you click on desktop, then you've got the options that come up. You got trash, you open that. And, your trash will uh, appear on your desktop there. Uh, mounted drives, or you can choose network, and you'll see a little network. Uh, should see a little network icon up here somewhere. Um, lower the desktop. We're not going to choose that. So where was that? I didn't even see that up here. There it is. Folder network. Uh, so I get rid of that. Uh, show icons from missing monitors. Sure, whatever. Okay. Extensions. So we can go through if you want to install any extensions in your system. Cache side eight. Yes. And you can go through and pull in some uh, extensions if you want to. There are some kind of cool features in there. If you want, oh, there it is. It's about to say if you want to get a desktop cube, that is under the extensions right there. And you can choose a desktop cube, and that way your your desktop. Well, actually, check it out, see what you think, and uh, and kind of you can you can let me what that know that what that does. Uh, general general settings. You go over and user interface scaling. The choices here are normal or double, which is high DPI. I do not use this. If you choose double or high DPI, what that does is it gives you kind of the 1920 by 1080 view on a 4K monitor. So it's still 4K, but everything is at 1920 by 1080. And that includes when you open up new windows. So that kind of destroys my entire idea of having a 4K monitor there. Uh, the 4K monitor allows me to have a lot of work on my desktop at any given time. So. Moving on over, hot corners is the next place we're going to make a change, and we're going to enable the upper left-hand corner. You see that turns green right there. Now if I go hit the upper left-hand corner, it gives me four workspaces, and those workspaces, I can use those at any point in time. It's kind of convenient for me right there. So doo -doo -doo. Uh, input methods, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not going to mess with languages. Um, I'm not going to mess with notifications or online accounts. If you do have an online account, you want to pop that in there, you can. 
uh, the panel. We'll look at the panel and uh, this over here for people like to hide the panel or if you like to increase the height, you can, uh, you can change the height right there. There's actually something we might want to do in the future with the panel instead of it having a little number with the icon and, and giving that glow over. I'd rather it just appear down at the bottom. That way I can quickly reference what window I'm going to. Uh, preferred applications, of course, that's your preferred app for what you want to open. Uh, privacy is the next place we're going to go. Remember recently accessed files, never forget old files, or you can choose 30 days. Whatever. Um, I like it remembering my, my recently accessed files so I can always get back to those. So that's a, a convenient option for me. Uh, but you choose whatever you like there if you want to have a list. And that's for all your applications. So if you open up a text editor, so I'll go over really fast and open up, uh, let's say, accessories. We'll go over to text editor, which is Z. If you open this up and you go to file, then it's going to give all of your recent uh, recent apps right in there. So that's integrated throughout the entire system. It's not just one app. That's throughout your entire Linux system. It will, it will now remember your recently opened uh, files. So if you're using a text editor or using some other kind of, kind of application, it will remember. If you want it to make, if you want to make it forget, then you just uncheck that. Okay, screensaver. This is something I'm going to be disabling. So um, over there, that lock immediately. No, I'm not going to do that. Lock the computer. No, I'm not going to do that either. Uh, lock the computer. There. Uh, now, if you have a laptop or if it's your home PC and you're, you're leaving these things around, then it's probably a good idea to lock that thing uh, after a few hours of no use. You can go through and customize these two and, and say what you want in your screensaver. I'm going to go back and uh, startup applications. These are apps that you want to start when you start your system. So um, when we bring this thing online, those things will start right up. And if you like those, then you can uh, throw in some new things. Like let's say you have Telegram and you're doing Telegram as a messenger, you can throw Telegram in there. Windows here, this is where we're gonna fix that problem where every time you open a window, it goes right in the middle of your screen. Of course, now I have to right click and go to new terminal and new terminal like that. Now, you can always hit Control-Alt-T to open a terminal there. So Control-Alt-T for a new terminal. Uh, just open a new one, but you can't tell because they're all stacked directly on top of each other. So I want to go through and make that not happen. So I'm going to go to Behavior there. Instead of Center, I'm going to choose Automatic. Now, by choosing Automatic, let me go ahead and close all those terminals, actually, and close all. So we're going to get rid of all the terminals there. I'm going to open up some new terminals. So I'm going to click over here and press Control-Alt-T. And you'll see it opens terminal and terminal, and it just automatically pops those in, and they don't go directly on top of the other one. So by not going directly on top, you can always get to the one behind it, and you can kind of see what's going on inside your terminal. So I'm going to go close all those again. There we go. All right. So flipping back over here. Window tiling. You can go through, and however you want to make that tiling work, you can do that. You can also increase the width of the sides here. We won't be going into that today. That's more of an advanced feature there. Uh, you can change your user environment however you really want to. So dropping down, workspaces. You can name your workspaces if you want to. You can uh, you can make a couple of options there and change their settings, etc. We're not going to play with that too much. Uh, over here we have Bluetooth, color, display, graphics tablet, if you can your display option. Then you'll see that I'm at, I've got the 496 by 2160 running right now. Um, I'll probably drop that down to the 3840 um, to 16 by 9 in the near future. Uh, but I'll leave it just like that until I get my, my drivers installed. So graphics tablet, uh, keyboard, sound, power management, uh, touchpad, mouse, etc. Let's go to power management really fast. I don't want my computer to go to sleep, so I'm going to say never. And then over here for sound, I'm going to choose sound and make sure that's going to my, my display port there. And I've got my input coming from my, my actual uh, adapter there. So that is coming in. Hopefully this is actually recording. So <laughs> uh, the other thing inside of sound is go to sounds and go down to inserting a device, which is just horrible. Um, this uh, inserting a device and removing a device, that. That and that are extremely loud. Uh, so I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to make that maximize and unmaximize. So I'm going to choose that, maximize, 
we got that and then unplug I'm going to choose unmaximize for that so we've got those options so we got that that way if you plug in a USB device it doesn't uh, blow away your speakers let's go back over here uh, system info that's just information about your system now we've got a few other options down the bottom here one is software sources I'm gonna go ahead and click this one and get it started before I go over drivers it's gonna ask for our passwords or our, our, our super secret whatever the password is that you've got set up for your system go ahead and enter that in there uh, it's got these software sources selected go ahead and select that when you click it it's going to go out on the internet and it's going to try to find the fastest source for you so I'm going to go ahead and and just wait for that thing to come down as soon as that's done we're gonna go over the next one and choose that and let it pull its uh, pull the others down it looks like it's pretty much done so let's choose that one okay now we go to the next one and it's gonna go down and it's gonna try to find the closest one to me it's gonna pull that down for a little bit so while it's doing that go back over to system settings I'm gonna choose driver manager it's gonna ask for our password again um, so if you have a, a password then you can enter your password right there um, up here it says that that one is getting about 7.4 which is pretty good so might choose pit give it a second yeah we're going to choose that one right there so now we've done that is asking hey your your cache needs to be updated I'm gonna choose okay so I'm gonna let it update the cache over there while I'm looking at this now here it's got an NVIDIA Corporation GP107 GeForce GTX 1050Ti um, <clears throat> one of the, the nicer yet less expensive cards it's not not on the extreme high-end list but I will want to use the NVIDIA driver now how do I know I want to use the NVIDIA driver there is something here so if I go to <clears throat> sorry control alt T and open up a terminal you can test the performance of your card before and after you actually get this thing uh, the driver installed the tool to use is GL mark 2 is uh, oops GL nice mark 2 is the tool you use it's not installed so the press center is gonna be like I don't know what you're talking about uh, when it says that it does say well if you'd like it you can just do that and middle click and after you middle click or two finger click left and right buttons at the same time it'll go grab it for you it'll start the whole process it'll run through it, it takes about five minutes I'm not gonna run it right now uh, but you can go ahead and compare your performance well let me go ahead and grab it right now fine uh, you can compare your performance before and after installing the driver so I'm going to go ahead and grab that thing now that I've got it installed you see that install was pretty fast and if you have your software sources to find properly the installs will be very fast so let's go over here and do that GL Mark II. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sudo. No, nah, we'll run it as a user. So as I start that, you can see it's got the little spinning horse there. It's going to do a few more things. And uh, then after that's done, we'll go ahead and choose the NVIDIA, NVIDIA driver. So we'll, we'll get that started. Now this isn't going to be a really, really good test because I'm going to keep working. I'm doing a video record while this is running, but it's going to be pretty close. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, software sources. Now that we've got there, our cache updated. You can go to your those PPAs there. You can add those for things like Mendeley or Skype or some other services out there. You can add some PPAs. Additional repositories, you can choose a CD-ROM installation disk, which is, uh, you know, we probably installed this from a USB ISO. I, cho I chose uh, an ISO that's burned onto a USB to install it. I don't even have a CD-ROM drive installed, so I, I can't really use a CD-ROM. Uh, but there you go. It thinks it was a CD-ROM, so it says that. You have authentication keys, reaver keys there, and then the maintenance. And different little options inside there. So we're going to close software sources. I do want to install this driver, but I don't want to install the driver while it's running the test. So I've got to kind of chill out. So while I'm uh, while I'm waiting for this test to finish, let's kind of look at the settings here. What's going on? You'll see this graphics card uh, is coming up. As, the driver for it is coming up as Nouveau, and it's not coming up as NVIDIA. So it is an NVIDIA card. We saw that when we first started. We, we went down. We listed all the specs for our system. We did that INXI, that I N X I space dash capital F. You can do a capital F, R, M, X, X, that kind of thing, which a capital F, lowercase, R, M, X, X. It'll give you a whole lot of information about what's going on in your system. 
Uh, in this case, uh, and we saw there that came up as an NVIDIA 1050 Ti. Well, in this case, it just tells us this is a Nouveau driver being used. It's not the NVIDIA driver. It's not like an NVIDIA, well, 390. Yep, there it is. 390 up there. It's not that driver being used. So, what's the deal? Well, the Nouveau driver is the driver that it... It's recognized NVIDIA. Um, Linux has built their own open source driver for it, and, and it will come up. And here's one of the important things. As you see all these frames per second as you look at this, um, these are really, really low um, for this graphics card. So even though this isn't the top of the line, it's a good graphics card. And it certainly should give you a lot better than uh, these frames frames per second right right there what you see so looking at that um, when we switch over to the actual Nvidia driver you our performance will go through the roof it'll be about 10 to 25 probably times faster than it is uh, right on the Nouveau driver that's for this particular card does that work for every card like that I suspect not I suspect on the, the really low-end cards that would be just maybe a a little bit improvement and then on the really really high-end cards I imagine there'd be a really massive improvement so you know your mileage may vary go ahead and uh, you know try it out however you wish let's go on and let's check out a few more options here one of them is going to be putting new icons down here in your your uh, panel this is actually called a panel down here so they call that a panel you'll see the whole panel light up when I do that and those little icons are the different things that are running right now on your system. Now you can see these are inside of, let's see if I can click, click one here. Uh, those are actually inside the group windows list. Um, I'm sorry, it's in a subset of your icons. I'm trying to get one to click, but forget it. Um, those right there are, are snapped to the panel. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So. Let's go up to accessories. We'll grab some like calculator. I'm always using calculator there. So I'll take calculator and just do a little arrow up here and calculator adds to the end there. And I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna grab text editor. You don't have to worry about pressing control or shift or anything. It's not gonna remove it from your menu. It's just gonna make a, another link to it down there. So now I've added a, a couple of things down there. I've got the, uh, well, what screenshot, what screenshot. Let's see, I grab that there. Um, that screenshot, there's something else, Kazam. I'm going to want Kazam. So I'm going to do a search really fast for Kazam. Grab that. I'll pull that down here. And we'll just pull it, click on the, right between a couple of those icons. So we're pulling some icons down here. I'm going to rearrange these too as they, as they sit. So I'm going to change their purpose position. It's actually got a good complement. It's got Firefox and the terminal in your folder. So it's got a good complement already. I'm gonna clear this off and we'll see if there's anything else we might want down there. Um, down in you know, that little quick launch. Doo -doo -doo, clicking through here. I'm not seeing anything right now. I think I got the things I usually pick. So, oh, and the recent files, you can see even the recent files that I chose are coming up right here with the unmaximize and maximize. Those are actually showing up even inside the menu. All right, so now I've got these. I'm going to pull that. I always keep my screenshot all the way to the far left. And I keep Kazam right next to that to the far left. I'll be putting OBS down there a little bit later on, but I don't have that installed right now, so it's not useful. Uh, text editor. Oh, there we go. So I got a GL Mark II score of 246. So I'll go ahead and save that. I'll go ahead and make this. And. We will just highlight that, I'm going to open up this um, two finger click or middle click on your mouse. Now that I've got that, I'll save this and where I save it, right there, I'm going to say this is uh, Nouveau Driver.txt. So there we go. So I saved that GL2 mark score right there. Now. As I'm looking at this, I've got this big white window in front of my face, and I don't like that. Uh, when you're working on a computer for several hours a day, if you've got this white screen, that's why I make these dark. Uh, and you can actually, if you're watching this video, you may actually even be able to tell just from the video. If you're in the black screen there and you switch to the white screen, you'll feel how much this strains your eyes just to see this, this light colored screen. So a couple of changes I make right off the bat. 
is I pop over to edit, which in most cases in Linux, edit is going to be where your preferences are. Go over to edit there. I'm going to display line numbers. That's that's good. Display the right margin because I want to know where it ends. And that's super. Uh, other there, the highlight things tab. I want to use tabs. I don't want to use spaces. And I do want a word wrap, but I don't want to split words over two lines. Well, that's great. Let's go over the theme here, and I'm going to choose Cobalt. And as you're watching this video, you may have actually felt your eyes relax when I when I chose the Cobalt there. It makes it much easier on your eyes and it works works really well go back to the, the editor really fast and uh, let's see if we've got anything else in there yeah this is use the system fixed width font I'm gonna change that to 14 and take that up to 14 there select and that seems to be a really comfortable uh, size for me right there so I'm gonna choose close now I've got that a little dark it works for me a lot better so I'm gonna close that out now over here, I've still got the system settings that's saying, hey, there's an NVIDIA driver. Do you want to choose that? Now watch what happens when I install an NVIDIA driver. So I'll go ahead and put this, put this in the middle of the screen and I'll kind of launch that right here. The driver manager. So I'm going to apply changes. It's going to have to go grab the NVIDIA driver from the web and install that into my system. So we'll have to uh, sit here and wait a second while it goes and does that uh, but anyway when i reboot my system we will have the nvidia driver installed i hope that this video has been helpful it gives you an idea of how to set up your initial desktop environment kind of gives you an idea of the settings that i make and it's something that maybe you'll like maybe you don't want to use uh, but that's really about linux it's it's about you it's how do you want to do it it's freedom of choice and freedom to make whatever decision that you want to make. So let me go ahead and end this video right now. And when we come back, we'll look at some more in-depth features inside of Linux.